Uh, next topic is Hadoop HDFS. And these are the set of topics we are going to cover in this presentation. What is and why HDFS? And uh, we'll take a look at the architecture, features, and commands. And uh, we are going to see how you can access HDFS, not only at the command line, but also from web UI. So you have uh, HDFS web UI. And we are also uh, going to see how we can use what is called a Hue uh, web UI. What is and why HDFS? So you can think of HDFS as a virtual file system built on the top of local file system. Okay. So when you start writing data into HDFS, it eventually gets written to local file system of the machine, of this distributed machine. And uh, you cannot browse HDFS like you do with a local file system. So you need to use HDFS commands, uh, even though the commands of HDFS are pretty similar to local uh, file system commands. Uh, so there are three different ways that you can access HDFS. One is using HDFS commands, and, uh, or you can use HDFS web UI, uh, or you can even use uh, you know, Java APIs to access HDFS, okay? Uh, we're gonna actually take a look at, in fact, there is another way, uh, which is using what is called the Hue uh, Web UI. So we're gonna actually take a look at how we can access HDFS file system using command line, uh, command line tools, uh, command line shell tools, and uh, then we're going to see how we can access HDFS uh, through the web and also Hue uh, Web UI. Uh, for those of you who are, you know, who are not familiar with the Hue, don't worry about it. We'd like to take a look at, you know, what Hue is all about uh, in a few minutes. Okay, so HDFS stores data as blocks in a replicated fashion. So this is where HDFS provides distributed storage system where uh, reliability is built into it. So management and replication of blocks are handled by HDFS. And we're going to take a look at how this is done in detail in a few minutes. Uh, and the HDFS is primarily distributed storage use. Uh, yeah, so primary distributed storage used by Hadoop applications. So uh, HDFS has built-in scalability, built-in reliability, and built-in automatic distribution of the data. So I think one of the questions that was asked was, is HDFS is the only uh, distributed storage supported by Hadoop? The answer is yes. On the bottom, HDFS is a D and only uh, storage system, distributed storage system. However, as you are going to see later on in this code camp, you know, you can build uh, the higher level uh, storage system such as Hive on the top of HDFS. So, you know, in the, in, in the, in, in, in the architecture, HDFS is the, uh, the uh, distributed storage system supported by Hadoop, and that's the only storage system that is available in Hadoop. Okay, okay so let's take a look at HDFS architecture. So as we talked about, uh, the, uh, the uh, Hadoop uh, is made of MapReduce and uh, HDFS, right? And both MapReduce and HDFS is built in master and slave architecture. Okay, so for each Hadoop cluster, meaning, uh, you know, the, uh, the Hadoop cluster, meaning uh, uh, multiple nodes involved, there is a single name node, a single secondary name node, and then there are multiple data nodes. Okay, so we have a single data, single name node uh, is a master, and we also have what is called the secondary name node, and we're going to actually talk about the role of this one in a few minutes. Okay, but for now, I want you to focus on name node, and there could be multiple data nodes. And your data blocks uh, will be in a form of a block, which is typically 64 megabytes as a default, will be replicated uh, based on replication factor. So default replication factor is three. What that means is that uh, each block will be replicated in uh, the uh, in different data nodes uh, three times. Okay, so in this case, B1 is replicated in data node one, data node two, and data node. Uh, I'm sorry, the data node one, data node three, and data node four. So if for some reason data node one is not available uh, because of power failure or something like that, a name node can access the same uh, block in different nodes. Okay, so that's how uh, reliability is built in, fault tolerance is built in, in terms of data uh, storage. 
Okay, so these are the nodes in HDFS architecture. So we see name node, data node, and secondary name node. So name node contains a file system metadata. Okay, uh, so you know your HDFS file system information is maintained in the name node. It also monitors the health of the, the data nodes. Okay, so if the data node is uh, the uh, the uh, data node will actually send the heartbeat to name node, and if the name node does not receive a heartbeat from a particular name node, it will consider that name node is unavailable, and it might actually you know re replicate the data block in another node. Okay, so it monitors the health of the data node, and the clients will communicate with the name node. Okay, so when the client wants to see the files in a particular HDFS directory, it will talk to name node and name node because it maintains the file system metadata, HDFS file system metadata, it will uh, let the client know where to get the data. And the data node is the one that actually maintains the data itself. So this is the one actually handle the data client request. Client will get where, uh, which data node contains a block and then client will actually talk to data node to get the data. And as I said, it sends a heartbeat to name node. Okay, so default is three seconds, meaning every three seconds data node, each data node sends a heartbeat to the name node, and that's how name node knows that particular data node is alive. Uh, data nodes are what is called the rack aware, meaning a set of data nodes can be located in a rack. In a typical production environment, the multiple uh, machines are, in fact, the uh, the uh, in a rack. So you could, in fact, have a multiple racks, right? And uh, so, you know, the uh, each rack could have uh, each rack could actually host a multiple machines. Okay, so data nodes is rack aware, and we're gonna actually talk about you know what this means. Okay, because uh, you know if a particular rack goes away, uh, you know if the power is off a particular rack, we certainly have these data nodes to be configured so that you know not all uh, replicated blocks in a particular rack, uh, so that if that rack goes away, you know you lose the data, right? So uh, data node is configured. I mean the the Hadoop will actually make sure uh, the uh, the data nodes are replicated across the rack. Okay, so we'll see example of this one later on using a picture. Now, secondary name node, the role of it is not for high availability, meaning, you know, it's not for when the name node goes down, you know, secondary name node kind of, you know, the uh, chip in uh, to handle it. That's not, that's not what the secondary name node is all about. It's not for high availability. Uh, it basically performs a periodic checkpoints, uh, reads uh, periodically the file system changes log of the name node and apply them to the name node metadata file. So instead of actually, every time you actually, you know, add a file or something like that, you know, it doesn't actually change the uh, name node right away. Instead, the secondary name node will actually, I mean, the, the change will be uh, in the change log and uh, the uh, secondary name, no name node will, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, uh, performs the periodic checkpoints and it will actually update the uh, metadata file of the name node, okay? So the uh, name node and secondary name node actually work together and the combination of the name node and secondary name node, you can think of it as a master node. And then multiple data nodes are the uh, slave nodes. Okay, so as I said before, you access uh, HDFS file system uh, in, you know, the, in multiple ways at the command line or uh, HDFS web UI. Uh, so metadata stored in the name nodes are searched and then the location of the block of a particular data node is returned to the client and then client will actually go to the data node to get the data. Okay, so this is the web UI, uh, HDFS web UI, uh, you know, basically uh, when you open uh, the browser, you are going to see HDFS name node. See here? If you click this guy, you can access your HDFS uh, file system. Okay? And uh, again, this is actually information coming from uh, the, uh, the, uh, the name node. Okay? Now, when you actually click each of these directory and access the file, and then it will actually go to the data node to retrieve the data. Okay, so this is uh, another picture that shows the HDFS architecture. So we have a name node that maintains uh, information about the file system. So basically, you know, name replications and directory information and things like that. Okay, so this is where we can actually have a rack system. So we have uh, three data nodes in the rack one, and then we have a rack two, which has a uh, two data nodes. Okay, and uh, Hadoop will actually make sure a uh, blocks will be you know, replicated across the rack, meaning uh, it doesn't 
you know, it, it, you don't want the particular block will be uh, in a single rack. So if the rack one goes down, you know, you lose the data. So in this case, if there are two racks, it will make sure that particular block will be in rack one node, uh, one of the data node in the rack one, and then the the rest of it is in the uh, in the data nodes in the rack two. Okay. All right, so client will actually access data node for getting the data or writing the data, but name node provides the metadata information. So client will actually get the metadata information from the name node, name node and then it will access directly to the name node. But this is all done behind the scenes, so you don't really have to worry about, worry about how things are done. Okay, so internal directories. So as I said before, you know, HDFS file system is built on the top of the local file system, right? So the director, the actual local directory where name node stores its metadata information is specified in DFS name .dir, uh, oops, sorry, DFS name uh, the uh, the configuration. Okay, uh, the default is whatever Hadoop installation that is a DFS and name. Okay, so that is a default, but you can change the local file system directory of where uh, HDFS is maintaining is uh, the I mean the uh, name node is maintaining its metadata by setting DFS .name .dir. Okay, so in the hands-on lab we are going to actually see uh, how you know what local file system directory is set to this DFS .name .dir. Uh, the second bullet says that directory where HDFS data blocks are stored. So this is where the data nodes are maintaining the actual data. So again, as a default, it's DFS slash data on the Hadoop directory, but you can change it using gfs.data.dir configuration uh, on your data uh, node. Okay. Uh, directory where secondary name node stores checkpoints. Uh, so uh, the fs.checkpoint.dir, that's actually specifying where in the local file system that uh, secondary name node is actually maintaining its checkpoint files. Okay, moving forward, HDFS features. So blocks are in name nodes. So in HDFS, uh, the data is maintained in a form of a block, and the blocks are 64 megabytes uh, as a default. Okay, and of course you can change the block size by changing a configuration uh, attribute, and we're going to actually take a look at CloudDrop VM. Uh, in fact, in CloudDrop VM, the default block size is set to 128 megabytes instead of the 64 megabytes. So HDFS handles the block placement. It knows where to place uh, the blocks, and uh, it also performs rebalancing. So if a particular node has too much information and another node doesn't have enough data, then it will rebalance the data. Okay. Uh, it also maintain. It also performs replication management. So if the replication factor is set to three, it will make sure that block is replicated in three different data nodes. And of course, those are again rack aware. It will make sure the data is uh, you know replicated across the rack. Okay, so this is the block replication. So blocks are replicated for reliability. So if a particular data, no data node goes away, uh, the Hadoop HDFS knows where to get the data from, you know, the, uh, the second or third uh, data node. Okay, so in this case, uh, you know, for part zero for data, uh, the replication factor is two. So it will be maintained in uh, one and three, data node one, and data node three. Uh, for part one uh, file, uh, replication factor is three, so it will be maintained in three different data nodes, like a two, uh, and a four, and f uh, five. What is two? Uh, yeah, okay, so here, here, Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So this is the this is a two four five. That's actually the uh, block ID. So for block two, it's maintained in three different data nodes here, here, and here. Okay. For block ID four, again, our replication factor is three. So it should be maintained in three different data nodes. So you should actually see four here and here. Okay. So uh, that's replication. Uh, HDFS data distribution. Again, number of data nodes a block is placed on is controlled by replication factor. So if your replication factor is set to three as a default, it will put on three different data nodes. 
Okay, so in this case, uh, plot number two is going to be uh, replicated in three different data nodes. In this case, node A, node B, and node D. Uh, as I mentioned before, block is also placed across the different racks. So, ex you know, example is if you set replication factor to three, and if you have a two racks, and uh, then in this case, two blocks will be in the first rack, and the, while the third block will be in the second rack or vice versa, which means the blocks are placed across different racks. So in case a particular rack uh, fails, then uh, data should be available from a different uh, the rack. All right, so let's take a look at exercise one. So exercise one is basically understanding HDFS architecture. So uh, let's take a look at the lab documentation. So lab documentation is HDFS, uh, Hadoop HDFS. Once you unzip the file, take a look at index.html file, open it. And the exercise one is Hadoop HDFS architecture. So click exercise one. So we are going to observe name node, data node, and secondary name node. Okay. So uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, have a two uh, browser. Okay, so I go to Cloudra Manager, and uh, so click Cloudra Manager, and this is what you are going to see. Okay. Uh, so if you take a look at the HDFS one, so this HDFS one, okay, this is the uh, you know the HDFS uh, the cluster. Uh, the, uh, um, so in this case, we have a uh, single name node, single uh, the uh, uh, sec secondary name node, and single balancer, and single data node. Okay, so balancer, I haven't talked about it, but balancer is the one that actually balance uh, the data uh, the, uh, the, uh, among data nodes. Okay, so now, if you go to HDFS1, uh, you know, the uh, you can see we have, uh, this is all if you go to HDFS1, you can see uh, everything is, oh, has to, oh, okay, so the uh, uh, one is history, history, yeah, okay, so history is unavailable, but it should actually give you, you know, the, uh, this good status things, okay, so which means uh, things are, uh, things are in health, things are in good health. Uh, let me see, I think, uh, oh, looks like, uh, why it doesn't, Mm -mm -mm. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is kind of new. I mean, you should actually have uh, something like um, history on available. It should actually have something like this. Like a st status, you should actually all have. Uh, uh, why is this kind of interesting? Mm -mm -mm. Why actually have? Uh, let me just actually see the status of this guy. Processes. Okay, so it's good health. So uh, uh, I, I'm actually in the good health, but uh, it's actually giving you a little bit of uh, status with the history unavailable, but the health is a good. All right, so uh, I can check the status of nodes, and uh, it should actually give you good health on all this uh, the uh, three nodes. And uh, balancer is actually none, so which means uh, you know I'm not running balancer as a default, I think. And uh, you can observe that all nodes are running in the default rag. Yeah, so you also actually give you information about the uh, you know rag information. So right now, you know, we have a single data node, um, and, and, and basically it is running a you know default rag. I don't even have a rag in this case, but uh, if you have a multiple racks with a multiple data nodes in each of those racks, then you'll see that information, rag information here. And uh, you can take a look at the server-wide configuration. So if you click the uh, configuration of HDFS, okay. Uh, so let's actually do that. So I'm gonna go to HDFS and go to configuration, and you se select the view and edit, okay. And uh, you can find that information about the data node and. Uh, uh, yeah, this is actually server-wide information balancer and data node. And there should be name node. Okay, so we're gonna actually mostly focus on name node and data node. 
okay? For the then, let's actually take a look at the uh, the name node. So you see the DFS name that there. So this is the uh, directory where name node is actually maintaining uh, its meta information. So you can actually go to DFS NN. So let's actually go to DFS and then see what it has. Uh, oh, so it's a permission denied. So you know I have to be I have to be a super user. So let's actually uh, let's see if I do sudo ls dfs and then okay. So uh, you know it does have uh, the log and the current. Um, so if I go to uh, so I think let me actually show you what we have done. Uh, okay, so the first thing we want to actually see the uh, block size. So uh, if you actually take a look at the server wide. And uh, you can see the block uh, size is set to 120 me 28 megabytes. Okay. And uh, then server wise select replications. Yeah. So another important thing is replication factor. So as a default, uh, the uh, here expand server wide. And if you click the replication, replication uh, the is set to three, meaning each data node will be replicated in three different data nodes. Okay, uh, the minimal block replication is one, and the maximum uh, block replication is 512. So you can actually have, you know, particular block to be replicated 512 uh, times if you want to. But for now, default is three. Okay, so that's basically a replication factor. Uh, let's take a look at the name node configuration. So this is what we have seen, you know, DFS and N. Okay. Uh, and uh, and the file system checkpoint transaction threshold. Yeah, so this is where the secondary name nodes comes in. You know, it actually check the uh, when is the checkpoint that it wants to actually save the log file and things like that. Okay. So checkpoint. Uh, you can certainly take a look at the uh, other things like a port and addresses. So uh, let's take take a, take a look at the uh, name node and uh, port and addresses. And uh, so port is eighty twenty. Okay. Uh, so in fact, later on, when you actually go to uh, you know web UI, HDFS web UI, uh, let's take a look at the uh, name nodes. If you click the uh, HDFS name node, you can see is in fact uh, the page is asking you to confirm you want to leave. Yeah, so I would actually leave like this. And uh, oh, yeah, so you can see name node port is 8020, right? Okay. Uh, all right. So that is that. Uh, and then you can take a look at the data node configuration. So you can uh, click the data node, okay? And uh, you can also take a look at the balancer configuration. So balancing threshold is 10%, meaning the percentage deviation from the average utilization after which a node will be rebalanced. Uh, so you know the uh, the, uh, the each data node has some kind of a percentage that it needs to be uh, in a, a field, and if the deviation is uh, the uh, from that threshold, if the deviation threshold from uh, deviation from that threshold is 10%, then it will rebalance. Okay, meaning it will move the data blocks around. Okay. Uh, uh, now study the name node web UI. So name node UI is actually this is something we have done. If you click the HDFS name node, okay, and then you can actually see. So let's do that. So you can actually browse the file system. So when you are browsing the file system here, you are browsing the file system of HDFS. Okay. So in the root, you know, I have a Flume, HBase, Solar, and Temp user. Uh, as a user, uh, you know, we have a. By the way, your user uh, name is Cloudra. So if you go to Cloudra, uh, you, know, you can see I have a bunch of uh, directories on this. Okay. You probably don't have this files directories yet, okay, because you haven't really played around yet. Okay. But uh, from the HDFS name node, uh, you can actually access the HDFS file system. Uh, so this is the HDFS UI you are talking about. Okay. Uh, let's see. So we browse the file system. And uh, yeah, so we take a look at the uh, uh, user Cloudera. And uh, you probably see this. Okay. All right, so that is um, exercise one. All right, so right now it's 12.30, and uh, let's have lunch for 30 minutes. And I'm going to give you guys about 20 minutes to try this exercise one. Uh, I'm actually giving you enough time to play around this. And um, I, I'm going to actually give you just 15 minutes so you know, uh, so they can actually proceed. So we will be back uh, 15 minutes after 1 o'clock, OK? And uh, I'm around, so feel free to ask any questions. So let me just. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, next topic is HDFS uh, commands. So you can find out all available HDFS commands uh, from this uh, website. So if you click this guy, uh, uh, okay, it looks like I need, didn't have a link. So you can see the bunch of commands that are available. Uh, are pretty much pretty similar to uh, you know the Unix commands that you're familiar with. Okay. Uh, there are a couple of yeah, so these are examples. So uh, in, in order to run HDFS commands, you have to start with the Hadoop and space FS and then dash and then you can specify commands. So if I want to see the list of directories and files on the current directory, then I say Hadoop FS dash LS. So LS is Unix command for listing uh, directories and files, right? Okay. Uh, if you want to specify, if you want to see the contents of the file, you can use a cat command. So you say Hadoop FS dash cat, and you provide the name of the file. Uh, if you want to create a directory, then you say Hadoop FS dash mkdir, and then test underscore dir one. That's the name of the uh, directory. If you want to remove a directory, then you are going to use Hadoop FS dash rm and minus all recursive and test dir one. So you can see these are uh, the commands that you can use for Hadoop database, uh, the uh, file system, uh, pretty similar to Unix commands on the local file system. Uh, there are a couple of uh, Hadoop HDFS specific commands. Uh, so if you want to copy local directory of files to HDF, HDFS, then you're going to say Hadoop FS dash copy from local. Then you specify the name of the directory of files. And then you spit, yeah, so that's the source of the, the source, uh, source, uh, source directory. Sorry about that. Source directory of files. And then this is the destination, Hadoop uh, directory of files. You can copy HDFS directory and files to local file system. In that case, you're going to use a copy to local uh, command instead of copy from local. So these are copy from local and copy to local. Those are HDFS specific uh, commands. All right, so we're going to do exercise two. So let's take a look at the exercise two. All right, so I am going to open the lab documentation. So let's go to exercise two. So here we want to display uh, ATFS, uh, the help. So you can say Hadoop FS, and uh, it will give you uh, the help screen. Okay, so you can see uh, you can perform cat uh, ch group ch mod and uh, df uh, and you know so you can see a pretty similar set of Unix commands available for HDFS as well. Okay, so that is that uh, Hadoop FS and uh, now we want to display uh, the uh, the files and directories in the current directory. So uh, so we are going to say uh, Hadoop fs and dash ls and uh, it will give you a list of files in the current directory and the current directory is a user home directory so basically you know i have a bunch of files uh, on the current directory so if i want to see the current directory of pwd so you can say hadoop and uh, fs and pwd so it will give you cur oh, oh pw is not available sorry about that uh, yes, PW is not available. I apologize. And, uh, you know, so you can actually create the uh, directory as I talked about in the presentation. And uh, so here I'm creating tester one and tester two. Okay. And, uh, and then I can actually take a look at the, uh, uh, the files in tester one, things like that. So uh, you can try that. And now once you have done that, you can actually take a look at the, uh, you know, the files uh, in the, uh, using HDFS web UI. So I'm going to actually go to another tab here and I can uh, click uh, HDFS name node and uh, click uh, browse file system. And uh, the things, you know, this is actually the uh, in the user's home directory. So it's basically uh, user Cloudera. So I have to actually go user Cloudera. And uh, so you can see a bunch of files and directories uh, that I have created. Okay. So you can, uh, you can actually uh, check from the uh, web UI, HDFS web UI. Okay. So I'll let you try that. So you can see tester one and tester two. And uh, you can actually remove the directory. And uh, once you remove the directory and you refresh the page, and you're not going to see that directory anymore. Okay. 
Uh, and uh, here, uh, now if you want to create the root directory, uh, the, uh, so basically whenever you are you know, performing a file system operation in HDFS, it's under user slash Cloudera, user's home directory. So you can see username and password, username and group name is Cloudera and Cloudera, right? But if you actually go to, uh, uh, if you go to, let's say Hadoop and FS, dash ls and if i go to root uh you can see it actually belongs to a uh, different user uh like uh, you know this uh, this this uh, this uh, temp is belonging hdfs and it belongs to a user hdfs and the uh, group is super user okay so uh the in order to actually perform, if if you want to create uh the uh, the uh, uh the you know another directory in the root then you have to actually use uh you know the hdfs user here Okay, so sudo minus u hdfs and hadoop fs make directory. And here, this is actually, this is the uh, URL pointing to the root. So if you want to create test one, okay, and then you can actually use this command. So I'm going to just use this guy, okay. So let's just make sure that I don't have test one in the root. So let me actually go to the root, uh, go to the parent directory, parent directory. I don't have any test one here, right? So I'm going to create the uh, test one. Okay, and the root. Okay, then uh, if I refresh the page, press F5, then you can see test one is created here. Okay, so uh, you know, so in order to create directories or files outside of your user, uh, the uh, group, uh, in this case in the root, then you have to use, uh, you know, the uh, user. You are actually using HDFS as a user instead of uh, Cloudera, which is a default user. Okay. All right, so that is uh, that is creating that one. Yeah, we just did that, and uh, so you, you know here we are going to actually remove it. So I'm going to remove test one as well. So I'm going to uh, do this, and uh, instead of make there, I'm going to say remove dash r. Okay, and uh, then test one uh, will be removed from the root. So it's basically actually adding to the trash, okay? So if I refresh the page here, uh, if I refresh the page, that should be gone, okay? All right, so that is, okay, so now 2.3. So this is something that you are gonna do, uh, you know, quite often, uh, because typically when you want to, you know, the uh, uh, copy a file from local file system to file system to uh, HDFS, this is the one that you have to use, okay? So here we are going to see uh, Hadoop HDFS hands-on lab has the simple one text file. So uh, if I go to labs and uh, oops, and uh, I have uh, Hadoop HDFS, okay, uh, it does have a sample data. So I'm going to go to sample data directory, and uh, this is the sample sample one text file. I want to copy this file to HDFS. Okay, it's a very simple file. So if I want to see the content sample one text uh, is, oh, this is actually a Tom Sawyer, uh, the, uh, the uh, text, okay? So what we want to do is we want to copy uh, into, uh, you know, we want to copy into uh, samples data directory, samples data directory uh, on the user cloud draw. And so, you know, user cloud draw and samples uh, data directory. So what we want to do is uh, we want to use uh, Hadoop command here so we're going to use Hadoop FS and uh, we're going to use copy from local okay and because I'm actually in the sample data directory I can specify the you know file name like a sample one text file like this and I am going to specify the destination yeah in this case I'm actually specifying my data as the destination uh, the uh, on HDFS, so it's basically user slash Cloudera slash my data directory. Okay, so I'm gonna say my data, my data here. So it will copy uh, sample one text file to my data. Oh, it's in this case, it already exists. Okay, so I can just remove this guy. So I had to FS. Let's actually remove this guy first. Remove. Uh, the uh, my data and uh, sample one text. Okay, so I'm going to remove 
uh, the uh, sample one text file from uh, HDFS. So let me remove it first. Okay, so it's actually removed the uh, removed, basically uh, moved to the trash. Then I'm going to copy it again. Okay, and uh, then I'm going to use the ls command to see if the file is there. Hadoop. So I'm going to use dfs. So let's try to use ls command. ls command. Uh, I want to display all the files and directories in my data directory, and I should see sample uh, one text file. Okay, so we should see sample one text file uh, right here. Okay, and it is actually saved uh, in actually my time is actually in the Pacific, so right now it's 10:34. So this is a file that was just copied. Okay. And you can certainly actually take a look at the uh, the file from here. So we can actually go to uh, the uh, again. You actually let's start from HTFS name node, and then click the uh, browser file system, and then go to user, Cloudera, and uh, the directory that we have copied it into is my data. So this is where sample one text file is present. It, this is the one that I just copied. So let me just remove it. And uh, then we'll refresh, you know, to see whether it is in fact it is removed again. Okay, so I'm removing sample one text file again from this uh, my data directory. So I removed it, and then I'm going to refresh it, and uh, press F5, and then we should not see uh, any uh, sample one text file anymore. Okay. All right. So that is that. So we try that. Uh, you can certainly take a look at the contents. If you click this guy, you know, then you you are going to see the contents of the file. Okay. Uh, you can also see the aggregate length of these files in HDFS. You know, basically we can use the minus du command. Again, this is du command is something you can actually use in the locally. So this is a local file system, right? So current directory has a 416k. Now we can actually do the same thing for HDFS directory. So I just add Hadoop uh, and fs uh, minus du. Okay, and uh, then it will give you give me uh, you know the uh, whatever. Uh, the storage, uh, the size that it's actually taking. Okay. All right. So that's exercise two. I am going to give you guys about 20 minutes right now. What time is it? So right now, uh, uh, 136. So I'll give you 150. I'll give you another 20 minutes. So we'll actually get started from uh, 55. Okay. Let me see if there are any questions before. Let me just pause. Okay, so next we are going to take a look at uh, the uh, admin command. So as a HDFS administrator, uh, you can actually perform a few things. Uh, you can actually find out the list of HDFS admin commands from this website. All right, so let's do exercise three. So here we are going to, you know, we are going to see uh, the uh, Hadoop DFS admin. So again, if you say uh, sudo minus u HDFS, so this is the user. We are basically uh, the uh, taking HDFS as user and uh, Hadoop DFS ad admin. It will uh, it will give you a list of uh, admin commands. So let's try that sudo and uh, minus u as a user of df uh, HDFS. I'm sorry, HDFS. And Hadoop and uh, DFS admin. Okay, yes, yeah, so uh, you can actually do a few things. Okay, so we are going to actually take a look at, we are going to actually perform a couple of things. So we are going to do some report. So it will give you some information about the uh, uh, DFS remaining disk space, DFS used and percentage and the blocks with corrupt replicas uh, on the replicated blocks and you know a bunch of uh, information, okay? Uh, you can actually find out the topology. So in this topology, it will actually give you information about, you know, which racks contain, uh, which data nodes and things like that. Okay. So let's try this guy. I'm going to just copy command and you can copy in the terminal window by pressing control shift V. Okay. And, uh, it will just give you, uh, 
you know the rag information since I have uh, I'm, we are running a single node. I mean you know there is and uh, the rag is the default. I meaning it's running sort of the default uh, rag. Okay. Uh, all right, and perform FC, uh, you can even actually perform FSCK, okay? So uh, basically to check the health of uh, uh, Hadoop DHFS, okay? And uh, you can uh, display the file location of the file system. So uh, yeah, you know, you, you know, I think that was one of the questions that was asked is the, uh, uh, where is the uh, local file system that actually maintaining real HDFS uh, directories and files? Uh, this is a command that you can, uh, perform to find out. Okay, so I'm going to just, it has a lot of information, so I'm going to actually add more at the end. Okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah, so uh, a bunch of information. So this is the uh, HDFS uh, file, and, uh, you know, it's actually giving you information where it is actually being replicated, okay, uh, as well. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a five, you know a few minutes to try this. So right now is uh, two o'clock, so I'll give you five minutes. Okay, so we're going to talk about HDFS Web UI. We have read, we already have seen uh, HDFS Web UI, so. Uh, uh, you know, name node and data node can each run an internal web server in order to display basic information about the current status of the cluster. So, uh, uh, name node front page is available from name node name and uh, the uh, 50070. Uh, 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 in our case, name node name is either localhost or 127.00.1, okay, which is the, uh, the current machine. Uh, basically, it lists the uh, data nodes in the cluster and basic statistics of the cluster, and you can also see the file contents if you take a look at the uh, you know browser file system link in the name node front page. So we already have done this. Okay, so this is what you are going to see when you click the uh, HDFS name node. I give you a bunch of information, and uh, so uh, let me just try one more time. So here we are going to actually go to uh, HDFS name node. So studied version, compiled upgrades, and the cluster summary information. And uh, then if you click the uh, file system, then you can actually see the contents of the uh, files or directories in HDFS, okay? All right, so we have already seen this guy. And now there is another web UI that you can use, which is called the Hue. Uh, Hue is basically web interface to all Hadoop-related uh, technologies. Okay, uh, since it's a separate, uh, you know, technology, uh, so using uh, Hue you can actually perform pretty much all the things that you can do with Hadoop and its ecosystem technology. So you can see on the left, you know, you can actually perform Hive query, Impala, uh, Impala query, and pick and search and HBase, and you can also even have a shell here. Okay. Uh, so it does provide the, uh, you know, files UI as well. So if you click this guy, okay, uh, you should be able to see uh, Hue interface and you can perform, you know, file operation uh, using Hue web UI, okay? All right, so let's take a look at the uh, uh, exercise four. Uh, so a quick start VM comes with, uh, comes with um, uh, the uh, Hue, so you can you can actually in fact see uh, the you um, know uh, hue right here. So if you click, uh, in fact, if you take a look at the cloud manager, you are going to see hue is one of the servers. Okay. So if you go down here, yeah. So hue has you know this is a hue server and bwex server. So basically, it is one of the servers that uh, you know provide uh, the web UI for. Not only file system operation, but uh, in everything else as well. So click Q, then you are going to see a bunch of things you can do. Okay. Uh, in fact, we're going to actually use Q once in a while for performing, you know, for example, Hive operation and things like that later on in the code camp. For now, we're going to actually mostly focus on the file system operations uh, being done in the Q. Okay. So again, you have to log in. Again, username and password is going to be Cloudera and Cloudera. So you sign in. And you're going to see lots of things you can do, you know, so you can see this is the, uh, this is home, and this is Hive UI, and this is uh, Impala, 
and this is a pig editor this is a file browser so uh, you know basically if you click the file browser you are going to see files you know the information uh, in uh, in just like you have seen in web UI right okay so this is my uh, user cloudera uh, the uh, the uh, the directory and uh, you can actually create the brand new uh, directories and files here okay so one of the exercises you are going to do is in fact you know creating uh, so let me actually go back to the lab documentation Okay, so exercise four. So click Q, and uh, you can you can actually click the uh, file system browser here, or you can click the files here. Okay, and uh, you know click files in this case, and uh, you're going to see files on your uh, user directory, user cloudera, user directory, and uh, you are going to create a brand new directory by clicking new and select directory. Okay and uh, then you specify the name of the directory my data2 so in this case it's basically you're doing the same thing at the command line using hadoop command so you say this is the same thing as hadoop uh, space fs dash uh, mkdir and then my underscore data2 so that's the same thing you can do at the command line here you're using q web ui so here i'm creating uh, my data2 directory so you click uh, create and then you can see my data two directory has been created okay and uh, you can copy a file uh, so here we are going to copy a file from local file system and uh, to uh, hadoop hdfs okay so again you can do these things using uh, hadoop and fs and dash copy from local and the source directory to destination directory so here we are going to actually do the same operation using uh, Q uh, web UI. So here we are going to click uh, copy. Okay, click copy. And uh, this is uh, yeah. Also in this case we are going to uh, we are going to copy into. Oh, okay. So we are going to copy sample one test directory under my data to uh, you know the new directory we just created. Okay. So we are going to copy and select this file. And uh, then you specify the destination. So destination directory is going to be, uh, if you actually start with the root, uh, then you know you have to specify root user cloudera slash uh, my 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 data too. If you don't specify, you know the this slash, then you can just specify my underscore data too. Okay. So if you don't use the uh, you know four slash, then it's assumed that you are dealing with uh, you know files or directories in the uh, current users directory. Okay. So in this case, we use the full path and copy, and then this file should have been copied into uh, my data two directory on the user cloud aura. Okay. All right. Uh, so that is. I'm going to give you guys about uh, uh, about ten minutes to try this exercise, and uh, if you have time, you know, you can certainly take a look at the homework exercise. So this homework exercise is pretty straightforward things. Okay. So I'll give you. 10 minutes. Uh, okay, so we'll be back 2.25. All right, so let me make sure that I 